Welcome to Movement by Design. Um, in this episode 4 we're going to tie the Acoustic Crafty. The Acoustic Crafty uses the same lip design as the Swim True Bucktail, but unlike the Swim True Bucktail, it doesn't rely on the stiff tail to help stabilize its swimming action. The Acoustic design uses the, uses the large head made of nylon body tubing to fight the front on water pressure created by the lip. What this means on a design point of view is the tail will have the tail will have an impact on the action of the fly. The degree of impact will depend on the drag it puts on the head of the fly. Simply put, the more drag, the less action. The less drag, the more action. Once you understand this, you can use a range of different materials um, to achieve a desired effect. So the reason uh, why I'm using craft fur is because it's a very supple synthetic material and it offers very little drag as it's pulled through the water. This, this means I'll get the best action I can in relationship to lip size. Okay, so before we get started, let me show you why it's called the Acoustic Crafty. The Acoustic Crafty has a tube rattle encased in the head of the fly. So when it swims, it also rattles. <laughs> so that's enough of the engineering behind the Acoustic Crafty. Let me show you how to tie one. Okay, so we're going to use a, a B10 Gamagatsu size 1.0. Let's just put that in the vise so the shank's reasonably level. I'm just going to start the thread in the middle of the shank and with touching turns we're just going to lay a base thread and we're going to stop about one eighth from the hook eye. Okay from here we're going to grab some medium bead chain. We're going to tie it underneath the hook shank catch it in, then with a series of crisscross turns, um, just secure that bead chain nice and tight, to make sure we have, a, have that gap so the foam lip can fit through there. So when it's nice and tight, you can just finish that off with a few helicopter turns underneath the hook shank and then over the bead chain, and then stop your thread on the other side of the, the bead chain. So we're just going to use um, some plastic coated stainless steel wire, 45 pound, for the lip loop. And we're going to cut a 3 inch piece or 75 mil long. Just pinch it, pinch it in the middle and then just fold the ends over so you, you've got a nice loop. We're just going to transfer that on top of the hook shank. Grab it in with a couple of turns, just manipulate it there so it's sitting on top of the hook shank. Um, if you have the butt ends about um, level with the, the hook point, the loop should be about the right size, but we, we're just going to check that before we go any further. So just keep it, um, so just holding that loop in position with a few turns, and we'll just check. So just so we get the loop about the right length, so just take a piece of 2mm foam, cut into a, a 10mm wide strip, and we'll just use that to measure our lip loop. And that's pretty much spot on. So like I say, a 3 inch piece of wire, a level at the tip, uh, level with the hook point, um, should get you about the right, right length, or right size loop. So we can go ahead now and, and bind that really nice and tight, making sure that the wire is sitting on top of the hook shank and coming right close to the bead chain. Okay. Good layer of thread on top of that. And then bring your thread back behind the bead chain. 
and you want to cut yourself a piece of three millimeters thick foam, 10 millimeters, 10, 10 millimeters wide as well. And what we're going to do, we're just going to pinch the ending just like that so it's pinched in half. Take our zapper gap or, or any super glue, just give it a quick coat, get it on the bead chains as well, the bead chain, and place our piece of foam right up against the bead chain, catch it in with a few turns of thread, and then with open turns, we're just going to wind back towards the hook point. Stopping at the hook point and then wind back. Return your thread in the, into the middle of the hook shank. And our next step is to add the rattle. This is where the fly gets all its noise from. Um, again, this is a venom barrel tube rattle. Uh, you can get them at the venomlures.com or any tackle store that, that stocks. Um, venom, venom tackle. I found this rattle to be the best. Um, some two rattles um, that, that are on the market around and they just don't make the noise the, the barrel rattle makes. So it's a poly, polycarbonate plastic rattle, pretty much indestructible. So as you can see, let's try and get my fingers out of the road. I'm going to encase that in, in the foam. So we grab the foam tag and we just pull it over the tube rattle and pinch that foam to the hook shank and then with a couple of turns of thread just secure it in and then work your way back towards the, the rattle. And just, just be careful you don't want to cut that foam. So you're looking for something like that. So next step Grab our scissors, just grab the tag end of the foam and just give it a pull up as you snip it off. Wind over it. Yeah, bind it down nice and tight and then finish your thread up against the foam. So our next step is to grab our body tubing. Um, I'm using the gas um, fly tubing, it's a quarter inch. You can also use um, the fish skull uh, Blaine chocolate body tubing in quarter inch as well. So we need, a, need to cut a three inch piece of that and we're going to place it over the foam loop, over the bead chain, just so it hits the foam head there. Then we're going to rotate it so the flat sides are parallel to the flat sides of the foam head and we're just going to catch that in with a couple of turns of thread. Now we want to keep all our tying as close as, close as the head as we can. Um, so that'll just give us room to tie off the tubing. So let's just try and keep all our tying on that little spot in front of the foam there. Um, when we just get your bodkin and place a drop of head cement on that, the end of the tubing there. Um, I don't like to use super glue just in case it wicks up the, the tubing and it might make it a little bit awkward to fold it on itself when it comes to finishing off the head. So just turn your fly on, on its side. The next step, we're going to add some flash. Um, it's upside down. So this is ripple flash. Um, any any flat mylar flash will do the job. Just cut five or six strands. We're just going to place them on the side of the fly. Catch them with a couple of turns, and then fold your your butt ends over so they're so they're all pointing forward. Um, you can just get a material clip 
hold that to the tubing. Turn your fly over and repeat the same process on the other side. You can um, add more flash or less flash depending on what, what your preference. This fly falls in the category of train smash presentation so a little bit more flash is not going to hurt. So uh, let's just fold that underneath the thread there, bring it on top so it's sitting on the side and then repeat the process of just folding that over. Catch it with a few turns and we'll grab that with the material, the hair clip as well. Okay, I'll just reposition the camera so we can get a good look at our next step. So the tail of the fly is going to be craft fur. Just using extra select craft fur for the, for the tail. It can be a little bit deceiving on how much you need because it tends to have a lot of under fur or under fibers that, that we need to get, get rid of. So I've cut myself a clump um, about two inches long by about half inch wide and we're just going to grab it on the two-thirds portion of the hair, the fibers, and we just run a, run a comb through it, get all that under fibers out and the small shorter fibers and we're going to re reverse it so the tips are facing forward. Turn your fly on its side and just place it so the butt ends are level with the back of the the head and catch it with catch it in with a couple nice tight turns. Just like that. If if your fibers are sticking out too much at the back here, we can just go ahead and just snip those. We want them about flush with the back, just like that. We'll just go ahead and hold that in with the clip as well. Turn your fly up the other way. And we're going to repeat the process on the other side. with a few more turns. Catch that in. Just clip that down. Just to show you what I've got there. So I've got two clumps, one clump either side of the hook shank or the hook bend. So I'm going to cut a clump slightly bigger than the sides just because we're only we're going to do this in one clump rather than two. Grab it two thirds up the length of the hair and just grab our comb. Just pull that through, get all that fluff out and we're just going to place that on top. a pinch pinch wrap just hold those butt ends out of the way get a couple of really good secure wraps on that again try and keep all your thread turns on top of each other you can grab that in with a material clip hold it all out of the way So now we're just going to do a whip finish and just be careful you don't grab any of those fibers from the, the top and draw that in and we can just snip that off. Turn your fly upside down. Grab your head cement, and put a few drops on 
that thread. And that'll soak around, that'll make it nice and secure. So just turn, turn our fly back down now and we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna snip the butt ends of that chartreuse off flush with the top of the head. Just like that. Take our material clip off. Now we're going to grab our um, tubing and we're going to push it on itself and that's going to force all the material back. To just tease that material back as you do it. And then force the tubing over the the rattle and the foam can be a little bit awkward to start off bit with it will stretch over so we want the we want the tubing about flush with the the back of the the foam just like that So now grab a, a marking pen and what we're going to do, now with a marking pen we're going to mark, um, we're just going to mark a, the tubing over the top of the bead chain, just like that. Pull your tubing off. Okay now grab some nice sharp scissors and we're just going to cut that tubing off on the mark. Just move your fingers out of the way a little bit and just let the, the fibers relax a little bit because we have to push it over the, the B chain. We don't want to weld, weld it tight like this and then have trouble getting it over the B chain and that depends on the size of the B chain too but we've got pretty small ones so we shouldn't have to relax it too much. We're just going to get our lighter and we're just going to melt the end of the tubing so it forms a little ridge all the way around and that'll just stop the thread from slipping off the tubing and it'll also stop it from un unraveling as well. So when we've got that nice little bead all the way around so now we're going to take the tubing again and we're going to push it on itself just tease those the hair out of the way a little bit and we're just going to work that tubing over the head Once you get the, the ends of the tubing over that bead chain, it should just hold itself there. Just manipulate that head. Just like so, we can, um, we can organize the hair in a little bit. Now take your thread, and with a long tag, then we're gonna wrap the thread around two or three turns and then pull it down nice and tight and then you get some good secure turns on that and then we can cut our tag cut our tag off grab a few more nice tight turns sort of manipulate the head a little bit so you're happy with the, the look of it and now you'll see we've got a little bit of a a valley there where we've pinched that tubing in. What I like to do is firstly just add a drop of head cement on those threads. I always, always lose my bodkin. Drop a head cement on that. That's soaked down nice and good. Grab our, I'm going to use just a pinch of red ice dubbing.
don't need a whole lot, just a, about an inch and a half maybe, maybe dub, of dubbing. Just so it fills in that little groove. Cut yourself a strip of two millimeter foam or slightly thinner, um, 10 millimeters wide by just the, the width of the sheet. And you'll see I've got, I've put a, a little slot You'll see I put a little slot in there with a trimming knife about 20 mil or three quarters of an inch back from one end. So that little slot is, is running with the length of the foam and that's just gonna, where we're going to push the, the hook eye through. And that's our next step, so just place it 90 degrees to hook bend, push the eye through that slot and then we're going to just rotate that foam to the working position, making sure it's nice and straight. You can see there it's, it's sitting pretty pretty straight on the wire loop. So just pinch that in position and get a couple of turns of thread on top of it. Just hold it in position while we just make make sure it's where we want it to be. That's sitting nice and straight and just have a look at the the underneath and the loop in relation in relation to the the width of the foam so ideally we want the wire just touching on both sides I'll just get it zoomed in there so ideally we want the wire just touching on both sides of the of the strip of foam so what we're going to do we're just going to Get our finger. We're just going to push that uh, push that wire loop on itself, just like so. And now you see that it's even on both sides. It's exactly where we want it. So then turn our fly upside down. Now grab our zapper gap or some super glue. And we're just going to put a nice coat on that wire loop. And then carefully put our foam lip back on that, making sure that it's flush on both sides, just like that. Okay, so that's perfect. Turn that back to the working position, and we can tie that off. The whip finish. thread off with our scissors firm pressure on the tag we're just going to go ahead and cut that off just like so next step I'm just going to take a permanent marker and I'm just going to mark the, the, the top of the fly so when you're happy with that turn our fly upside down our next step, just like the swim true bucktail, we're going to trim um, the foam, and we have it. A, <coughs> we have the same options as the, as the swim true bucktail. We can cut it off square, or we can just follow the the wire um, to form a, a teardrop um, lip, and that's what I'm going to do. So we just take the fly off the vise. I'm just going to take a nice pair of sharp scissors using the, the wire loop as a guide. I'm going to cut all the way around the lip, like so, and then we're just going to cut those little ends off as well. Just like that. Now put your fly back in the vise. Oh, it's upside down. The next step I'm going to take some goop and a little trowel. A little, this is just a little artist trowel. So you're going to put a dollop, dollop 
on top of the trowel there. You can use an ice, you can use a power bop stick or or um, a piece of plastic. All we're doing is we're just putting a coat. We're reinforcing the foam with a coat of silicon. You can use um, soft tex or anything that's um, anything that's gonna dry flexible uh, to help reinforce that lip. So while that's drying, I'm, we're going to add some eyes. Again, I'm just going to use goop. I'll just put a, a little dollop either side of the, the head. Where I think the eyes should go. So for the eyes, I'm just using for the eyes, I'm using 3D. I think they're 732 or something like that. Probably five mil. Close. On either side of the head. Just make sure they're the same spot. Have a look at the front. Okay, when well, you're happy with that, uh, we can let that fly dry. Okay, so the final step is to just tweak the, the lip a little bit. So when your goop dries, um, you see it's... So when your goop dries, you'll see the lip is reasonably um, flat. So what we need to do first is um, we need to push against the bead chain so that angle, uh, so the angle of the lip is about 45 degrees. I find that that's probably the best angle to start with, and you, you can change that as you fine tune um, the swimming action that you that you want. So the first thing you need to do is just look at look at the lip and your hook point, and see if you can eyeball the middle of the loop to the point of your hook and just make sure it's nice and straight and that looks pretty good. If it's not, you can just bend it to whichever direction you want to go. Um, so well, the other thing we can do is we can pinch this together a little bit to make it concave. Just like this, I'll just get you a closer look. So you can see now if you tweak it together like this, you have a nice concave lip. Now, if you if you find that your fly is turning on its side when you strip it, so let's say you've, you've tied it onto your leader um, and you start stripping it in. Let's see if I can just get a good angle here for you. Okay, so, so you start stripping it in and it lifts to one side when you strip. So what you need to do is get your lip and just gives it give it a twist in the direction of the hook. So if the hook lifts up this way, you're going to twist it towards that and that should um, correct it. Obviously if it goes the other way, you want to just tweak it um, the other way until, until your fly starts to swim really good and it will swim good it's just a matter of getting that um, that set up so the other thing you can do um, if you find that you want to go faster say say you say you're fishing in um, a, a river that's got a fair bit of current and you find that it, it's just too too fast for your for your fly or it's lifting to one side what you can do you can reduce the surface area of your lip by just pinching it together like that and, you, and that will get, give you a, a faster retrieve um, with, a, with a fairly stable swim. So you can, all, you can always manipulate that um, and you can bend it back out the other way if you find you, find you want to slow down your retrieve um, and get a nice swimming action. 
So that's completely um, changeable, um, just like the swim through bucktail. The other thing you can do is you can have a square lip. Instead of um, just cutting around the wire, you can just cut it square off the end and then where it goes back into the bead chain, just trim, trim, um, trim that following the, the loop into the bead chain. Um, you, you really need to do, regardless of what you do to the end of the, the lip, you need to make sure you notch that um, lip out as it comes towards the, the bead chain. That, that really does bleed a lot of the front, front of the water pressure um, off the lip and um, it really does help to stop the fly from spinning. So I hope you enjoyed tying the Crafty. You can tie these in a, a lot of different sizes. I've even tied them using the, the half inch body tubing and as long as you increase the increase the, the lip size a little bit, um, if I can find it for you, I'll put it somewhere. Okay, so here's an acoustic angel. So the tail of this one is angel hair. This is about nine inches long, this one. But you can see the head is made out of um, half inch body tubing. So you just need to change a few things. The, obviously the, the loop's gonna be bigger, but it, it, you end up with a really cool fly with a great swimming action, a lot of noise, and in certain situations, it's really gonna help. Um, I'd certainly put this in the train smash category as far as uh, presentation. <laughs> But sometimes that really does work for you. The Acoustic Crafty. Cheers.